Winanga Bilaga, Nadi, India Mara, Yulu, Thargon, India Mara, Yulu, Bull and Bamboo. My belief in place and time is to always respect land and to always respect ancestors. Today as I stand here, I think about the deaths of my people, the deaths in custody of young people, Aboriginal people, Noongar, Wangai, Kuraniya, and Kanijalwangai. The true story that we welcome all refugees into this country. We, were, we are refugees ourselves as Aboriginal people. We have always been that way. So today, I stand here, I think back to my people who are still refugees on this land. And the refugee people that's been murdered in this country, my heart goes out to their families. We commence by acknowledging that we are standing on Gadigal land here. The Gadigal land from which we speak is inscribed with laid histories of settler colonial violence, occupation and ongoing theft of Indigenous sovereignty, unjust incarceration, quarantine penal islands, physical and psychological torture, practice with impunity and the classification of some lives as worthless and less than human. All of these find their points of origin in these charged sites of settler colonial occupation. Across the water there is Fort Denison, otherwise known as the Pinch Gut, one of our original penal islands where we dispatched our undesirables, tortured and executed them. Here at the Roundhouse, as an originary site of colonial violence, looking out to the prison island of Rocknest, we remember that unjust incarceration, quarantined penal islands, physical and psychological torture practiced with impunity, and the classification of some lives as less than human. All of these find their points of origin in these charged sites of settler colonial occupation. On this International Human Rights Week, we are calling attention to the rights that Australian governments have long declared are important to be respected by all regardless of who we are or how we came to Australia. Successive governments have ratified a range of human rights treaties, including the Refugee Convention that offers protection for those seeking asylum from persecution, the Convention on the Rights of the Child that guarantees children access to education, care and freedom from imprisonment, and the Convention Against Torture and other cruel, human and degrading forms of treatment and punishment. So today, each of us, as members of the Australian polity, call our government to account. It is impossible to enumerate in full all the individual acts that evidence the government's clear flouting of both the spirit and the letter of international human rights. We therefore limit ourselves to a representative catalogue beginning with the second incarnation of the Pacific Solution. We confine ourselves today to only reading those events listed in the public domain. Numerous other instances remain unnamed. Under the terms of these conventions, we call the Australian state to account for the following violations. I, Melissa Park, call you to account for a policy of calculated cruelty towards around 1,500 children, women and men, imprisoned in conditions of extreme hardship and damage to their physical and mental health in offshore prisons on Manus Island and Nauru. I, Helen Driscoll, call you to account for the rape of Nazanin, aged 23, on Nauru and for the ongoing trauma inflicted on her family. I, Amala Groom, call you to account for placing asylum seekers and cage conditions on Christmas Island after the unexplained death of the refugee Fazel Shigani. I, Baden Offred, came to Australia as a migrant at three years old from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Call the Australian government to account for the death of Hamid Kazahai, a Kurdish man from Iran aged 23 who contracted septicemia in the deliberately squalid 
and unsanitary conditions of Manus Island and who died after being airlifted with organ failure. I, John Highfield, call you to account for the establishing of a torture chamber on Manus Island, now known as the Chalka, where detainees experience threats of rape as well as beatings and torture. I, David Wish Wilson, call you to account for those of you who have driven into mental illness and irreparable breakdown by imprisoning them in conditions of violence, abuse and despair. I, Arnold Zabel, call you to account for your scandalous treatment of the men living in the transit centre in East Lorengau on Manus Island. I, Robin, as a Yamaji, many of whose forebears and family were taken through this Fremantle roundhouse to incarceration and death at Rottnest Island Prison, call you to account for the forced separation of families, with partners sometimes detained in separate facilities, sometimes one on shore and one offshore, and for the trauma of breaking up families by placing one part of the family in the community while keeping the other in detention. I, Cochula de Silva, call you to account for the forced deportation of an asylum seeker who was driven mad by the regime of abuse and assaults he was compelled to endure, and who was handcuffed, taken from the Manus camp, and forced to return to Iran. I, Mahinda Pereira, call you to account for the scandal that compels the families of refugees and asylum seekers who have been killed or have died in your custody to pay for the cost of repatriating the bodies of their loved ones in order for them to receive proper burials. I, Kylie Subski, call you to account for the forced deportations and reformment of asylum seekers back to their countries of origin, racked by war, violence, persecution and torture. I, Christopher McFarlane, call you to account for the suicide attempts of children as young as five years old in fear of being returned to the hellish conditions of the camp on Nauru. I, Muhammad Ali Bakiri, call you to account for the rape of gay men, the ignoring of the use of young boys for sex, and the return of these boys and gay men to the same compound where, where, where their rapists remain. I, Evelyn Wong, call you to account for the use of dog squads and late night raids to intimidate and violently move people from one detention centre to another. I, Caroline Flay, call you to account for the imprisonment of women, men and children in the Nauru prison as a result of refugees engaging in peaceful protests. I, Janet Galbraith, call you. I call you to account for the forcible transfer of unaccompanied children from Charlie compound to Brava compound on Christmas Island and for the brutal assault of these child asylum seekers. Film footage shows some of these children screaming with fear, resisting circo officers as they are being forcibly moved, held in throat locks, wrists bent back, forced to the ground by as many as four ERT officers on one child at a time. I, Marcello Messina, call you to account for the failure to provide necessary equipment facilities and communication aids for people living with disabilities in detention. I, Hannah Patchett, call you to account for the punitive targeting of the courageous refugees who defy regi re regimes of censorship and silence in order to report human rights abuses against their fellows. I, Leonie Lundy, call you to account for the systemic sexual harassment of women and girls in the detention camps by those bound to protect them. I, Lara Palombo, call you to account for robbing asylum seekers and refugee children of their right to a safe and fulfilling childhood. I, Kaliyuhun Patnaden, call you to account for the death by burning of Tamil man Leo Siman Pillai, age 29. Placed in the intolerable suspension of a temporary visa, Leo chose to die by fire rather than living in the constant fear of being returned to the country where he had fled. I, Al Poulet, call you to account for the unconscionable abuse of children who are forced in these camps 
to witness horrors that leave them speechless. We, Michelle Bowie and Sarah Ross, call you to account for the horrific and despairing death of Hagadiah Amini. Hagadiah set himself alight to escape his intolerable situation and called on us to bear witness to his suffering and anguish. The night before his death, he stated, Yes, they did this to me. They sentenced me to death. My crime was that I was a refugee. They tortured me for 37 months and during all these times they treated me in the most cruel and inhumane way. They violated my basic human rights and took away my human dignity. They killed me as well as many of my friends. I, Teresa di Somma, call you to account for the death of Ali Ahmad Jafari, 26-year-old Hazara man in Villawood Detention Centre in 2013 after a heart attack. Concerts of failure to provide medical assistance remain. I, Theresa Piani, call you to account for the sexual assault of women in Melbourne Immigration Transit Accommodation and for the sexualized violence of the so-called pat downs now regularly taken under uh, regularly undertaken whenever anyone leaves a detention center to go to a doctor's appointment. I, Mark Newhouse, call you to account for the conditions of violence, filth and absolute despair inflicted on the recognised refugees of Fla Camp Nauru, where they lack adequate water, property sanitary conditions, safe working conditions for the few able to work and any possibility to live full and decent lives. I, Iqbal Barkat, call you to account for stifling the voices of writers, poets and human rights activists such as Behrouz Bouchani and many more. I, Dean Chan, call you to account for the ongoing threats against Benam, the roommate and close friend of Reza Barati, who was tortured, threatened with death and has been placed in unsafe, threatening situations since his friend's murder. I, Vincent, call you to account for the death by hanging of Reza, age 26, in Brisbane. He said, I am tired. Always police and people follow me. I want to kill myself, tell my family. I, Suvendrini, call you to account for the beating and, and assault of a pregnant woman in Melbourne Immigration Detention Accommodation. This led to her baby being born prematurely and her being hospitalized and returned to detention, forced to live alongside the group of men and women who had assaulted her and who continue to threaten her. I, Joseph Bugliesi, call you to account for the 33 counts of sexual assault of children in immigration detention in Australia between the dates of January 2013 and March 2014. I hold you to account for the numerous sexual assaults that no doubt go unreported. I, Melita Luck, call you to account for the anguish inflicted on the loved ones who are compelled to watch their family members and friends self-destruct as they stand by powerless. We end our calling by quoting from a letter from imprisoned writer Behruz Buchani. I know a lot of men in Manus prison who are crying and their shoulders and hearts are broken. I know a lot of those crying in the darkest nights on a remote island hiding their tears. account for this river of tears on this remote island. We call you to account for this river of tears. We call you to account for this river of tears on this remote island. We call you to account for this river of tears.